Preface and Introduction of a Year of Hymn Stories, a Primer of Hymnology. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Larry Wilson. A Year of Hymn Stories, a Primer of Hymnology by Carl F. Price. Preface this little book is presented as a primer of hymnology for the purpose of awakening among sunday school scholars a greater interest in our hymns it consists of a series of fifty-two hymn stories one for each sabbath of the year told in simple form without any attempt to give a critical history of the hymns the writers grateful to professor carl p harrington and the rev dr charles s nutter for helpful suggestions in the preparation of these hymn stories and to Silas H. Payne for access to his manuscripts. Some of the stories have never before appeared in any book. Others, already well known, have been drawn from authoritative sources of hymnology. All of the hymns are to be found in the New Methodist Sunday School Hymnal, and the number in parenthesis following the first line of the hymn on each page of this book refers to the number of the hymn in that hymnal. Superintendents can profitably spend a few minutes each Sunday in telling the school the story of a hymn, preferably in their own words, adapting to the audience the material on the printed page, or reading it directly from this book. The story should be followed by the singing of the hymn. While the plan of this book follows a hypothetical calendar, the occasional hymn will be found not to fit the actual calendar of any year. Palm Sunday and Easter, for instance, are movable feasts, and even our fixed holidays, to which certain hymns refer, may fall nearer to some other sabbath than the one herein designated then too missionary sunday sometimes falls on the fifth sunday of the month instead of the fourth or else regularly on the first sunday of the month therefore the superintendent may use his own discretion in planning the course of hymn stories to fit the calendar of his year or to fulfil any other plan he may devise the teacher may find it helpful to tell these hymn stories to his class and thus to give incentive to each scholar to memorize the great hymns of the church no one can ever measure the influence in after life of a hymn once fastened in a child's memory many a sinful man has been brought back to god by a hymn learned in childhood forcing its message upon his conscience in some critical moment many a christian has been steadied through temptation or sorrow by such a hymn let us not be derelict, therefore, in giving our Sunday school scholars the full benefit of our hymnotic heritage, that their lives may be enriched by the spirit of Christian song. Carl F. Price, New York City, October 1, 1914 Introduction Happily, the day of the irresponsible songbook is past. With the advent of the new Methodist Sunday school hymnal, there has broken upon us a new light. As we thumb its pages, there dawns upon us the consciousness that at last the church has recognized the possibilities of song on the impressionable nature when life is young, and has adapted itself to utilize that method of spiritual conquest. The simple dignity inherent in its mechanical makeup lures the way to the rich fields that lie within its covers. It appears that scarcely anything of real value touching the needs of youth and maturity that might be expected in such a book has been ignored the fullness of it is fountain-like overflowing the wonder is that in the relatively small compass of less than three hundred hymns it is so near completeness its themes are diverse dealing with such structural truths as are essential in the making of character and the enrichment of life the fact of god god in christ personal experience service consolation scriptures missions great days in the church such as christmas and easter patriotism and a long list of themes interlinked indissolubly with the symmetry of the christian life it has a hymn for every heart a message for every time of crisis a melody for every emotion to anyone who has given any considerable thought to the effect of bright sparkling cheery songs upon childhood and youth rather than those that are morbidly depressing there will come a sense of deep satisfaction by glancing over the titles of the hymns look at these luminous lines come let us join our cheerful songs fairest lord jesus now thank we all our god 
singing for jesus our savior and king the joyful morn is breaking hark ten thousand harps and voices joy joy immortal joy all these and more are indicative of the radiant spirit that leaps to meet the fresh young soul as it timidly faces the mysteries of life richly fraught as the hymnal is of itself its worth may well be emphasized this is the happy conception that lies at the heart of a year of hymn stories to know the hymns in a crude indifferent way is not enough to sing them with no grasp of their great meaning still fails to reach the desired end frequently more must be added a ray of light a touch of color a flash of fire what is better than to group around a hymn here and there an attractive cluster of illustrative material a year of hymn stories tends to fix in one's mind special hymns running through the year upon which the emphasis is placed besides this it is suggestive of the importance of the hymnal in the school with some hint of prophetic vision the methodist sunday school hymnal has been proclaimed a lasting triumph not too great is the challenge of its merit for as a standard of hymnody it cannot be ignored its spiritual message outbreathed from poetry of the finest lyric charm coupled with a certain high musical excellence gives it the quality of permanence it should become a fixed part of the sunday school curriculum a musical standard of religious instruction an attractive aid in teaching the wonderful truths of that kingdom where song itself shall have no end george f farmer derry new hampshire in the preface and introduction